Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. A truly humble man is hard to find, yet God delights to honor such selfless people. Booker Taliaferro Washington, the renowned African-American educator, was a leading example of this truth. Shortly after assuming the presidency of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama, he was walking through an exclusive section of town when a wealthy white woman stopped him. Without knowing the famous Mr. Washington by sight, she asked him if he would like to earn a few dollars cutting firewood for her. Since he had no pressing business at the moment, Professor Washington smiled rolled up his sleeves and proceeded to do the humble task she asked him to do. When he was done, he carried the cut wood into the house and stacked it by the fireplace. A girl recognized him and then revealed his identity to the lady. The next morning, the embarrassed woman went to see Mr. Washington in his office at the Institute and apologized profusely. It's perfectly all right, madam, he replied. Occasionally, I enjoy little manual labor. Besides, it's always a delight to do something for a friend. She shook his hand warmly and assured him that his meek and gracious attitude had endeared him and his work to her heart. Not long afterwards, she showed her admiration by persuading some wealthy acquaintances to join her in donating thousands of dollars to the Tuskegee Institute. In the reflection for today, we will talk about the divine requirement to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. The scripture in the first letter of the Apostle Peter tells us, so humble yourself under the mighty power of God, and at the right time He will lift you up in honor. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 9. The Apostle Peter concludes his first letter to the Christians scattered throughout Asia Minor with the specific instructions of encouragement. The letter was written around the year 62 to 64 AD. Primarily, these instructions are directed at those in the role of elders on how to lead, but he also gives advice to all believers on how to live humbly with one another and towards God. In humility, we wait and trust God to exalt us in His time. In humility, we place our concerns in His hands but we are also called to remain alert, attentive to the devil, and to resist him by focusing on standing firm in our faith. After this short life 
of sufferings, heartaches, disappointments, and discouragements, eventually our God will put an end to our suffering. We all long to be glorified. We long to know that we are significant and for others to know it as well. That desire is not necessarily wrong. All natural human desires have some legitimate purpose that honors God and is a means of adequately expressing it. In this case, we are made in the image of God, and He instilled in us the desire to be exalted. The key to a Christian and biblical view of glory is to pay close attention to what God says about seeking it. The Bible teaches us to stop trying so hard to make this happen and to trust God to lift us up at the right time and place as He sees fit. He is a good Father who loves us. Let Him take care of bringing us to the glory. Our call is to seek humility and not blindly engage in seeking glory before others. Jesus showed us how to do that. The letter of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians in its second chapter reminds us that Jesus is God, and yet when He came to earth, He emptied Himself and became the servant of all. We read, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though He was God, He did not think of equally with God as something to cling to. Instead, He gave up His divine privilege. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When He appeared in human form, He humbled Himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name of all other names. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. Then, at the right time, the Father elevated Jesus to the highest position in the universe. Peter echoes that idea in verse 6 and the next verse. Why are we so afraid to clothe ourselves with humility towards other Christians? Why does it bother us to live in submission to other people? We are afraid of becoming insignificant, of going unnoticed, of becoming nothing. As used in the scriptures, humility does not mean weakness or self-hatred. It means a proper appreciation of how we are in relation to God. It also means a human force under control. The famous English theologian C.S. Lewis says humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Peter reminds us that we are not humbling ourselves under the hand of our human authorities, including the elders of the church. No, we are voluntarily humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of the everlasting God. When the time is right, He will exalt us here, or in the life to come, or both if He feels like it. Our willingness to serve others, to become nothing, is not a declaration that we are in fact insignificant. Our humility in service to others is a powerful statement that our mighty God can be trusted to give us all the glory and recognition we crave when the time is right. We Christians must humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, trusting that He will exalt us at the right time. We must abandon the work of seeking our own glory to accept the work of serving and submitting to others. And when the time is right, our God will use His mighty hand to exalt us. I must clarify that being humble 
does not mean that you will submit to improper practices or that they will lead you to commit abuses against others. We must first obey God in our conduct. Humbling yourself is a hard thing to do, isn't it? We must be sincere to ourselves. There are words of great encouragement and perhaps conviction for those who struggle to submit to the harsh and corrupt human authorities of today. The passage speaks to those who humbly serve year after year with little recognition. It encourages those who provide others with limited power or value in society. Natural human fear driven by the negative influence of the enemy tells us that we are wasting our lives, that we are on the wrong path, that our choice to serve humbly without obvious reward is evidence that we may be useless after all. Peter writes that we are to take that fear and cast it, deposit it into the loving hand of our Heavenly Father. In fact, he tells us to take all of our anxieties, all of our worries, and give them to God who cares so much about us. But this is not a promise that God will fix everything that worries us. God is not obligated to follow any script we write for Him. It is a promise that the mighty God will receive our concerns and care about them. He will carry them for us. He is trustworthy to handle them in the best way. Peter's words are a command. It is not God's will that his children continue to live under the weight of those burdens. Believing that God is powerful and that He cares about us should result in us daily turning our worries over to Him. The Apostle Jane tells us, And He gives grace generously, as the Scriptures say, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4 and verse 6. The enemy of our soul often whispers lies into our hearts and questions God's goodness and faithfulness. The accuser of our soul is the devil who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour, as the scripture passage for this reflection tells us. And he delights in accusing us before our Heavenly Father. It uses the same strategy to shipwreck our souls as it did in the Garden of Eden, whispering in our ears, Has God really said? Are all God's promises true? Can you really trust His word? My dear friend and brother, being humble will lead us to put aside pride arrogance and being pretentious. We must take as an example the humility with which Christ gave his life for us sinners. He suffered humiliation, ridicule, and even death itself. But God in the end gave him the greatest place of privilege before all creations and the universe. This day, He expects you and I to follow in His footsteps, His example. Let us humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. In the end, you will see that it was the best decision you have ever made in your life. Our Heavenly Father, we confess that for too long we have depended on our own sufficiency and have tried to solve our own problems with our own self-sufficiency. We thank you, Father, that you care so much about us that today we can cast all of our burdens on you and give you all of our hurts, disappointments, and worries that seems to be flooding our lives today. Thank you, because we are certain that you have promised to carry all of our anxiety and pain. We admit, Father, that we are weak, but we praise you that we can draw on your amazing strength today and tomorrow. In the sublime name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen.